Hello everyone! Long time followers know that my main digital drawing software was paint tool side for years. I used to try Clip Studio Paint every now and then, but I never felt comfortable with it. It felt too stiff to draw with and too complicated for me. But a few months ago I decided to give it my all and try one more time to use it. And I finally figured it out. It turned out I only needed to do a few steps to set it up in the right and suitable way for me. And after that, I felt comfortable at last and ended up fully switching to Clip Studio Paint. So since I finally figured it out, I want to share how I found my way through it. Because I know that some of you might still be going through a struggle similar to the one I faced. But before that, I want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community that offers a great variety of inspiring classes in the creative fields, including illustration, design, photography, and much more. And it also offers classes on useful life and work skills like freelancing, productivity, and lifestyle. In a nutshell, Skillshare has a rich library that would undoubtedly feed your curious minds. And the interesting thing about it, you can get access to all those classes at once when you join. For us artists, Skillshare has a good variety of drawing and coloring classes that would help improve our skills. One interesting class I found is this Introduction to Mixed Media by Olga Rogalski. It teaches you how to use a combination of colors like Copics, pencil colors, and pastels all together to create an artwork. And I mentioned this before, but in case you don't know, my anime drawing for beginners class is now available as well on Skillshare. In this class I show you how to draw characters, both males and females, how to draw hands and feet, how to use references, as well as how to draw clothes, shoes, hairstyles, and facial expressions. The great news is that you can try my class and all the others for free now, because the first 1000 people to click the link in the description box will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. And if you want to continue afterwards, it's only $10 per month for a yearly subscription. Head to the link in the description box to join the community, explore, and enjoy learning. Okay, so going back to how I switched from Paint Tool Side to Clip Studio Paint, I can summarize what made my switching smooth in the following 5 steps. Step number 1. Pen Pressure This is the most important step and the number one reason that kept me away from Clip Studio Paint for years. Because having the unsuitable pen pressure setting was the reason that it felt too hard and uncomfortable to draw with. To adjust this, just go to File and then Pen Pressure Settings and do multiple strokes to get the pressure right. The trick to get this right is very simple, do not press hard on your pen unless that's your way of drawing, but I don't recommend it because it would hurt your hand on the long run. Instead, do a few light strokes applying just the right amount of pressure. After that, click on check adjusted settings and try the result. If you're satisfied with it, click done. Congratulations, you've solved most of your pen pressure problems. By the way, one thing to note is that there will still be some difference of pen pressure when comparing to paint tool size. But don't worry, you'll completely get used to it after your second or third trial. Step number 2. Command Bar and Workspace When I first started using Clip Studio Paint, I made my user interface close to the one I had in Paint Tools I. But over time I got back to the default Clip Studio Paint workspace, except for the command bar over here. I tend to use the buttons on this bar a lot, so I added the same commands that are in Paint Tools I's quick bar. Basically for zooming in and out, rotating the canvas, and flipping it. And I also added the free transform and mesh transform buttons to make it easy for me. You can add any buttons you like here by going to file then command bar settings. You'll need to do some digging to find the buttons that you want. But here's how I added mine. I chose main menu then view and then I dragged the icons I wanted one by one. I added zoom out, zoom in, fit to screen, rotate left, rotate right, reset rotation inversion and flip horizontal. And I also added the transformation buttons by going to edit and then transform. Then I dragged free transform and mesh transformation. As for the workspace, you can rearrange everything to look like the paint tool side user interface by dragging those tabs around. Or you can just get used to the default Clip Studio paint interface. It's totally up to your preference. Step number 3. Keyboard shortcuts. As a digital artist, I'm very dependent on keyboard shortcuts. So I made sure to add shortcuts to my tools in Clip Studio Paint as well because it saves me so much time. And it was also very helpful at start because it helped me stay focused and not get lost between the numerous tools. I have shortcuts set for all of my tools like pens, brushes, erasers, paint bucket, selection and others. And I totally recommend you implement shortcuts in your workflow as well. Shortcuts are personal so feel free to set them up the way you want. 
but to set them up, go to File, then Shortcut Settings. You'll need to do some digging here as well to find the tools that you want. Personally, most of my shortcuts are under the Tools setting area. For example, I set the F key as a shortcut to my pencil tool for sketching and line art, and the shortcut V for my Psy brush tool, and the shortcut C for my Psy watercolor tool. Give this some time to set up and you won't regret it. It will undoubtedly save you a lot of time and effort. Step number 4. Area Scaling One of the things that really frustrated me at first with Eclipse Studio Paint was filling the base colors. I'm used to using the magic wand and bucket tool to fill my base colors. Not gonna go into the details of that, but if you want to know my base color filling method, you can check my tutorial on that. It's in the recommended videos. But anyway, in Clip Studio Paint, when you use the magic wand or bucket tool to fill your base colors, you'll see that the color doesn't go beneath the lines, and there will be some sort of uncolored edge between the base color and the line art. The fix for this is super simple and is the same for magic wand and bucket tool. Simply, under the tool settings, tick the area scaling checkbox, and adjust the number to what you find best. For me, I found that setting it to 10 is just right. By the way, in case you don't find the area scaling option, just click the wrench icon and enable it from here under the fill tab. Step number 5. Brushes This is not a necessary step, but for me, I had it hard at first because I didn't have the brushes that properly matched my style, so it took me some time and a lot of trial and error to find what I like. If you're interested in trying the tools I use, I've combined them all for you to download. You can find the download link to all the brushes I'll mention in the description box. The main important two brushes that really boosted my workflow with Eclipse Studio Paint are a replica of Paint Tool Size Brush and Water Tool. My usual shading method goes like this. I use the brush tool to add the shade, then blend it using the water tool. And that's why these two brushes really saved me. I downloaded them from the Clip Studio assets, but I remember that I still played around with their settings, so you can find the link to the original ones in the description box, and you can get my modified version within my brushes collection. There are two other brushes that I heavily use. The first one is this pencil-like sketchy brush. I use it for sketching, and sometimes I use it for line art as well, to give a sort of sketchy vibe. And the second one is a similar brush to the previous, except that it doesn't have a texture. I started using this one recently for my line arts and I really love it. Of course, these brushes are not final, and I might highly likely change them in the future. But for now, they're benefiting me greatly and totally help me produce smooth artworks in Clip Studio Paint. So those are all the steps I took to have a smooth transition to Clip Studio Paint. It might be a little different for others depending on their personal preferences, but I hope that this at least helps make the transition easier for you. It took me 3 years after buying Clip Studio Paint to finally switch to it, and I wish I had done it earlier. So I truly hope you don't go through that and jump into it as soon as you can, so you can open up so many interesting opportunities and a higher potential for your artworks. Good luck on your journey, and see you in another video.